So we're on Daf Chaf A, and we did the Mishnah. Let's just review the highlights of the Mishnah because it's been a while. And the Mishnah is concerned about someone who testifies on, a mar- on behalf of a married woman that her husband is gone and then he wants to marry. And we're afraid of Lazus Fasayim, if you remember. It looks really uh, a little bit suspicious that he testified and, and then he married her. So therefore, Allah, as formulated by the Mishnah, is that we're not going to allow him to marry her and that was the case where he said that uh, she was divorced and he brought a get. But it seems like Bidyevit, if he would marry her, that marriage would be valid. And then we're not going to break up the marriage. Then we have another case in the Mishnah where he testifies not to the fact that she received the divorce, but to the fact that her husband died. There's even a case where he claims he, he himself murdered the guy. <laughs> And there, once again, the Mishnah, because of Lazus Fasayim, says we're not going to allow him to marry him. And we had a long sugi here about Medina Sayyam. I don't want to go through it now again. It would, it would take up our whole hour just to review it. So let's pick it up here with Mace Harakiv, which is it's counting up from the bottom of Chafei. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven lines up from the bottom. And the Gemara, as it usually does, it quotes the Mishnah. And the Mishnah quoted the opinion of the Tanakama about a witness who testifies about the husband of this woman, Mace, that he died, or Haragtiv, I killed him, or Haragnuhu, you know, together with a group of mafiosos, you know, we we rub them out, so to speak, is lo yisas ishto. He's not allowed to marry the wife of the person about whom he testified that he either knows he died or he killed him or he's part of a group that killed him. So the Gemara's Medayik, who knew the lo yisas ishto? Holy acher tinose. The Mishnah is not saying that we reject the testimony. And that's pretty strange. A man, a man is testifying that he killed someone which means that he is a murderer and we're going to rely on the testimony of a murderer and we're going to allow her, based on that testimony, to marry someone else. We won't let him marry her because of Lazus Fasayim. But Acher, as far as marrying someone else is concerned, Tinase, and we're going to rely on his testimony, even though by his own confession, he admits that he killed a person. He's a Racha. And the Torah says, Altatius Rosh at Eid, Leo Se Chamos, meaning the Torah says that we disqualify Russia for Eidus. And therefore, the obvious question is how could we rely on his testimony, according to which he is a Rosh and he murdered this man, to allow the wife of this man to marry someone else? How could we accept the testimony of a Russia? And now we're about to embark upon a sugya called Palginon Dibura. Are you familiar with that? No, both sides? Jeff, does that ring a bell to you? Palginon Dibura. Yeah. Palginon Dibura means that we can split your sentence when you're, te- when you're testifying as a witness. We can say, you know what? Stop. You know, we're not going to consider the rest of your sentence, the safer. We're only going to accept the ratio. Now, in this particular case of her active, it's a little bit difficult to split between a ratio and a safe. He only used one word. He said, I killed this man. That's all he said, her active. So we're going to split it in half. Omar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef has a different case of Palgin and Dibur. What was his case? Loni Rava'ani, Leonsi. Okay, who Viachem it start from Mohongo, but Lertsoni, Russia, who Vatora Omar Altatius Yodcha in Russia, we all say Chomps. So Rav Yosef says the following that Palgina Dibura, in the case of Ploni Ravani, applies, but only 
if he's not making himself into a Russia, if he's testifying about himself as a participant in Revia, Revia is, is what we call Mishkav Zachar, then we can split his words into two. We can accept Ploni Revaani, in which case he's testifying against the Rovea. And then when he adds the word Leonsi, it means he's clearing his own record. I was a victim of a rape. I was not an active participant in a Misa Revia. And therefore my record is clear. And we could take the Revia and reject the fact that it's, it's he. He himself was part of the Misa Revia, as if to say he's testifying that himself. But rather, who Viacham Tarfin, we can link him up with someone else and form a valid cut of two Edim, Lahargo, and put the Rovea to death. Again, all this is based on the fact that the, the, te- the aid, the, the witness who's testifying, is clearing his own reputation. And he's not a Russian because it was Laons. However, if he says, Lirtsoni, that I was a willing participant in the Misa Revia, which means I, by my own admission, am a Russian, then Russia. He's a Rosh of Torah Omar Teshis Yotra in Russia, Leos Eid Chamas. The Torah says that we cannot rely on the testimony of a witness who, by his own admission, is a Rosh. And therefore, if we apply that like a, you know, like a glove, if it's like a glove to our case where he testifies that he murdered the husband of this woman, how could she? marry someone else, meaning we're going to add one more witness and integrate them into a cot, and then we're going to allow her to get married based on the testimony. How can you rely on the testimony of someone who, by his own admission, is a Russia? Now, in general, when we talk about uh, establishing the death of a woman's husband, we have two categories. We have one category which is called Edrus, and another which is called Umdana. Umdana means that technically we cannot rely on two witnesses. But we have an Umdana. We have, I guess in, in American English, you'd call it circumstantial evidence. Like, let's say, for example, in the case of a woman whose husband uh, was, you know, fell, well, what should we say? He, he was in a boat and the boat sunk to the bottom of the sea. There were no survivors that we know of. I mean, you could talk about uh, September 11th, you know, and I think there were actually 11 cases where the Besden had to Paskin that a woman could get married without finding the remains of, of their husbands. So that's called Aguna. Now, in the case of Aguna, where it means that we want to be mater woman and we have every reason to believe that her husband died, so we don't need technical aids. We need what we call umduna. Umduna means evidence. Now, sometimes you could have evidence without, without technical avis, where the avis is, is, is disqualified. I'll give you an example. The Gemara has in the Sefta Sanhedrin a case of Shimon ben Shetta. And what happened was that Shimon ben Shetta saw a person who was holding a knife and he was running after someone to kill him. And Shimon ben Shetta was running after him. And I'm not sure if he would have possibly prevented the murder, but at least he could testify about the murder. But what happened was that they ran into a dark, like a cave kind of. So technically, Shim Ben Shetak did not testify because he didn't see the knife go into the guy's back. 
a <laughs> second later, he saw the man come, holding the knife, blood dripping <laughs> from the knife, and the other man is dying. So Shimon Shetta says, I can't testify and put you to death with another witness because I didn't see the knife going into the back. Now there, the relevance of that Avis was to put to death, to condemn to death a murderer. So it's all about what we call implementing Misas Bezdi. When it comes to Misas Bezdi, we need Avis. Avis is an entity with legal rules and all sorts of requirements. For example, the Gemara says in Marcus, if one aide saw the witness, witness the crime from one window, the other from a different window, vantage place, and they didn't see each other, that's called Aedes Bilchedes. That's also technically disqualified. If Moshe and Aaron together would see a, wit a testify and a witness, we cannot accept that testimony. Testimony requires all sorts of rules and conditions that have to be met. Uh, like you have, for example, you go to a lawyer to write up a contract. Sometimes the contract can be 10 pages long. It's got fine print. Or if you ever went to a bank to get a, a loan from a bank, and they're, they're 50 pages, and they have to, you know, have to sign you. There's a fine print. And, and if it comes to a, a, a court case, it really depends on what's written in the contract. It's, it could be technicalities that maybe you weren't even aware of. But when it comes to Avis, there are all sorts of technical rules that have to be... That's in order to kill a person, put him to death and condemn him for Mitzvah's peasant. Like, for example, the case of Revere. So what is the import and the repercussion of this Avis? We're going to put the Rovair to death. And for that, we need two Avis that are technically reliable because of the the din of Gufa Edis. You know, there are no Psulim in the Gufa Edis, no disqualifications, no glitches. And if the person who's testifying against the Rovea in order to condemn him for death is a Russia, then I have a problem. Because technically the Torah says I cannot rely on the Edis of a Russia. However, when we get to the case of Aguna, yeah, the issue is not condemning a person to death. No one is being accused of, of murder. We just want to know whether this woman's husband is alive or not. Can she get married or can she not get married? For that, we have a locha of ego. So that not to bind the woman down for the rest of our life, we will rely on less than technical evidence. Something which would be circumstantial evidence. So the Gemara now wants to suggest a reconciliation of our Mishnah with the statement of Rabbi Yosef. How could our Mishnah accept the testimony of one of, one of two witnesses who, who by his own admission is a Russia and on the basis of his testimony to allow this woman to get married when Rabbi Yosef says that if a person says Ploni Ravani Lertzoni and by his own concession he is a Russia. We cannot accept his Avis to put the Rovair to death. But he tamer, but maybe he'll answer. Shani Avis Isha, the Akilu Bey Rabbanon. The Rabbanon said that even testimony, which technically is disqualified because it cannot meet up to the strict requirements of Avis, nevertheless, in a case of Igun, drop the requirement of Edus and just try to gather enough evidence to establish in the minds of the Bezdin that there's no doubt about it. And with all certainty, her husband is dead. And then Afghamidi is going to be a case of a rush. Now, let me ask you a question. I mentioned before various cases of technical psulim and Edus, like Edus Miuchedes, or Moshe Biyar and that of brothers. What about the case of a rush? How would you classify and define the psul rush aliyahs? Is it a technicality? I'll give you an example. The Torah says that a melech, a king of Israel, is not kosher aliyahs. 
That's a technicality. We're not saying, heaven forbid, that we don't believe the, the develop, but he doesn't qualify for a witness. And those qualifications will generate what we call psulia guf. Psulia guf means a technical foul. You know, it's just that you, you stepped over the line and that you're not cautiously able. Where would you place Russia? In the case of a Rush, who I assume he's telling the truth, but technically the Torah says, uh, what's the Pesach here? Altacious Yodfem Russia Leo St. Thomas. You can't use him as a witness. It's a Psula Guf, like two brothers, or like Yezvi Yuchedes. Or shall I say in the case of a Russia, I don't believe him. I don't trust him. He has no credibility in the Jewish court of law. He's a Russian. Where would you classify him? In this case, he's a uh, uh, gay of the divine. <laughs> what his testimony is affects him. Because he wants to marry. Is that what you mean? Let's say we tell him he's not allowed to marry. All right, back to the. Uh, yeah, he's not allowed to marry. But he killed he killed her husband by his own admission. Right. So, yeah. So, so should we say also... that he's technically not cautiously agus as a technical soul? But we really trust him. Or should we say no? When the Torah says you're not allowed to rely on it on a Russia, it means we don't believe him. He doesn't have credibility. What would be your like knee-jerk response? Again, there's a combination. There's the fact that he's a Russia claims to be the guy. The other he has a benefit <laughs> because if he uh if he but let's say he has no benefit whatsoever because they're not gonna allow him to marry. He knows that they they read him the, you know, the Constitution. Okay. You know, uh, they, they read him the Fifth. So then, you know, you will not be able to marry this. Okay, I won't be able to marry him, but I want to tell you the truth. I killed a guy. Would you trust somebody and allow her to marry someone else? Based on the testimony of a Russian, you might say, yes, we should rely on him. The Mishnah says we rely on him. Hi, Rav Yosef says, Ravani Lutzoni, he's not believed. Okay, that's because in Hilchas Edus we have a problem because he's a Russia. By his own admission, Willard Sony, he's a Russia. We can't rely on his Edus, but, but that's a technical psul. And then in the case where I don't care about Edus, I could be Mater, a woman, as an Aguno, with all the kulos and the leniencies that the Chachamim instituted for the sake of allowing her to get married. Here I need just evidence. I have to be convinced that her husband is gone. I'm not going to let her get married if I'm not convinced that her husband is dead. Tomorrow he's going to show up. In the meantime, she married someone else. She has Mabzerim. No, who knows what else? So again, I come back to my original question. I don't know if you're willing to take an answer. Let's say he has no Nikias whatsoever. He gains nothing whatsoever. But he's a Raja by his own admission. Is he technically possible? Or is the Torah telling us about a Russia that he has no credibility? I would go with the latter. That's where I would go. I would say he has no credibility. So that even if you're talking about a guna and a kibbe rabbana and a kibbe rabbana, but up to a certain point, the rabbana can be naked if they have absolute conviction and evidence to rely on, even if it's technically not good. Let's say two witnesses would see her husband die, one from one window and the other from another window. Or Moshe of the Arab would come in and testify that we know that her husband died. In that case, I feel... No inhibitions about letting her get married. Moshe and Aaron are not making up a story. They may not be kosher famous, but the book of Egon, they don't need atheists. We don't need the technical atheists. All we need is their monas. We need credibility. And that gains, that generates a, cer a certainty based on evidence. We have good evidence here, but a Russia. What kind of evidence do you have from a Russia? So I'm thinking out loud here that maybe what the Gemara means to say is we don't actually believe him that he murdered the husband. Because we have a principle called Ein Adam Mesim Asma Russia. And by the way, Lahavdil in secular courts, one of the biggest problems that the courts face if their goal is justice, Tzedek Tzedek Tirgo, is self-incrimination. That's what plea bargaining is all about. I'll make you a deal. 
you confess to the crime, and instead of sitting for life, you'll sit for 10 years. And the guy confesses. Allah doesn't have that issue. Plea bargaining is a, is, is a real difficult flaw in the entire justice of the legal system. Because in plea bargaining, you can convince a guy who's on trial that he has no chance to win. We're going to prove that he's guilty. And he is overwhelmed by the fear of sitting in the, in, in the clink, you know, for the rest of his life. So he bargains and he gives you an admission and he confesses a crime that he is never guilty of. And this is what goes on. It's a rotten system. In Allah, we don't have that problem. We have other problems. But ain't other Mesa Masa Roshan. Self-incrimination is worthless in a Jewish court of law. And therefore, to some extent, I could believe him. Again, you need another witness, but we have two witnesses. I can trust him. Not that I believe that he murdered the guy, but I believe him that he saw the guy dead. Anyway, the Gemara quotes Rav Menashe. Well, Omar, Rav Menashe, here we turn to Daf Chafeim and Beis. Gazlan de Devreim, Usher li edus isha, Gazlan de Devrei Torah, Posel li edus So here comes Rav Sheshes, with the, Rav Menashe, excuse me, with the following distinction. With regard to a Russia, because of theft, there are two distinct categories of psule edus. Again, we call them by one generic term, but we really should smash them into two distinct categories. A gazlan could be puzzled the orisa, or in another scenario, he's not puzzled the orisa, he was not guilty of outright theft. But we consider him a Gazlan and he's possible me the Rabbana, me And there's a fundamental difference between the two. If he's a Gazlan Dvar Torah, then we don't believe him. He has no credibility whatsoever. We believe he's a no good liar. He steals people's money and he'll perjure himself in base. However, there's something called a Gazlan de Rabbana, me the most common example is a gambler. A gambler could be what, what we call mafriche yodim or sachikim bekubia. Either they, they gamble with cards and, and dice or they, what? No, no, I said dice. Dice or they have races and uh, they win money from other people because they win the races. And again, the Rabbanan said that such a person who is dedicated to raise his own salary by, uh, by being a Masachic Bukubia, that's his only source of income. He does nothing else with his life. He's probably addicted to gambling. Gambling is a horrible addiction. Horrible. People absolutely ruin their lives when they get addicted to gambling. I don't know. It might be worse than even alcohol. I don't know. Anyway, if not, it's a close second. So the Rabbanan said that even though you're not a Gazan, because the, you were playing in a game against, let's say, Shimon. Shimon lost the game, and therefore Rumain picks up the chips. He didn't put his hand into Shimon's pocket and steal. But the Rabbanan said, for whatever reason, we have to go, that's a suit called Asmachta, it's like Zela, but it's not Zela. So the Rabbanu want to exclude such a person, but he really is kosher liyadis. The Torah relies on his aides. We don't rely on his aides. How long, Rabbi Menashe? And he says that we have a, a nafkimino gabe aides isha. You remember that aides isha, for the case of Aguna, he kilu be Rabbanu. Rabbanu makes certain leniencies. One of those leniencies, says Rabbi Menashe, is that a gazlan de divreyam, like for example, a gambler who's only possible as a gazlan de rabbanon, will be relied upon for a decision, which means we don't believe he's lying. He may be a no good gambler and he's not contributing much to society in any positive, constructive way, but nevertheless, he's not lying when he says that this woman's husband died or was killed in battle. I don't know what. Why? 
because he's not, he, he hasn't forfeited his credibility. But a gazlan do rice, which means someone who puts his hand into your pocket and he steals your money, or even worse than that, he accosts you by, by gun, by knife, knife, knife point, and he takes your money. Such a person is not reliable. He's a no good liar, a thief. A, he's, he's a robber. And therefore, says Ramanash, if he's a no good liar, then he cannot supply evidence to allow a woman whose husband may or may not be alive to remarry because we don't trust him. And if we don't trust the Gazan the Orisa, according to Rabbanash, for Adis Isha to allow her to get married, how can we trust a murderer who, by his own admission, killed someone? The only thing is, I, I want to point out there's a technical difference here. Gazan the Divrei Torah means that we have testimony that he stole. In this case, Haraktiv. We have no independent source or evidence that he actually killed the guy. Maybe we don't believe when he says he killed him. We only believe when he says, I saw him dead. In any event, let's go through the Masifta here. John, you have the Masifta, right? Kevon Shilarav Menashe. It's got five lines down from the top. She'ed posel menator posel gamliedis isha. That if you have someone who is excluded and disqualified from Adis according to Torah law, he cannot testify even for Adis isha to be matter to get married. Him came there for the different Rabbi Yosef. Adam Neman lifts all his atzmo betainus rasha. When the man says Ploni Ravani lit Ritzoni, we believe that he's a rasha, and therefore we cannot trust him even for Adis Isha. And we go back to Rabbi Yosef on the previous on the previous daf, and Rabbi Yosef says Ploni Ravani. Lertsoni is Enomitztarev. And the assumption now the Murray is if he's Enomitztarev, then he cannot testify to be Matur in Aguna in Avis Isha. Is Madua Biomer Haraktiv Tinose Ishto Hare Ludivria E. Shahar Gobiatsu. Binemon Lomar Sheheno Rutseach. Just like a coin to have Yosef. When a person says, Claudio, Ravani Lertzoni, he is believed to make himself into a Russia. So too, if, he, if a man testifies or active, he's believed to make himself into a Rotsea, and he's possible for all Edis. For all Edis, even in Edis Isha. How can he be to his wife? Neymar, the Gemara says, perhaps Rav Menashe di Omar ki Rav Yehuda. Okay. Now we have to go back to our Mishnah. Our Mishnah recorded a machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and the Tanakhama. Point to Rabbi Yehuda, active, loti That if a man testifies that I killed your husband, she cannot marry anyone. Loti for anyone. And that itself is a a view that foretells in advance the view of Rabbi Yosef, that you cannot trust a man who says Ploni Ravani Lertzoni, because by his own admission, he is a rush. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda now Mishnah says that her active, where by his own admission, he is a murderer, we cannot allow his wife to get married. So therefore, the Gemara says, name what should we say to Rabbi Nasha, who disqualifies a Gazlan Tvar Torah for Edus, even for Edus Isha, reflects the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda, that HaOmer HaKtiv Loti Nase Ishto. That's the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda. However, the Chacham say we do rely on his testimony or HaKtiv, together with one other witness, and will allow her to get married. They hold that when a person says her active, his wife can get married. I, he's a Rotseach. How could the Rabbanon 
rely on the testament of someone who says they're active to allow his wife to get married. He, by his own, his mission is a rote seyach. So again, he, unfortunately, he doesn't tell you much. He said, it's just in Kilu, in explaining the Rabbon, in Kilu, be Avis Isha. Shaf Avis Epsulim, Li Avis Menatorik, Sherim, Li Avis Zu. Right, so we had Rabban Ash who says the Gazan, the Divrei Torah, is possibly Avis Isha. Now we're saying that no, the Rabbon reject the Shita of. Rabbanash, and they hold that with regard to Edisisha with Mekil, and even someone who's possibly Edis Torah is kosher, the Edis Zu. Now I'm a little disappointed. He doesn't really tell me why. I mean, if he's possibly Edis Torah, how could he be relied in the case, relied upon in the case of Edisisha? I mean, I understand and kill Rabbana, but they the Rabbana don't have a limit. They can't be making them allow a nation cease to get married unless they know for sure that her husband died. But they're relying on this Russian who says are active. Do you have anything, Jeff, in your notes by any chance on this? The sift is, is particularly vague. Nothing, nothing much. Okay, I don't blame it. He probably was as, as confused as we are. I mean, you have to say, I don't think you have a choice. You have to say that somehow he has credibility because if he doesn't have credibility, he can't possibly allow his wife to get married. Mark seems to be assuming that even a Gosling or Rice would be kosherly. Ah, maybe we could say like this. That a gazlan is possible to raisa on two levels. You know, there are two dimensions. One dimension is that if he's a thief, then for the sake of money, he'll tell his grandmother, pardon the expression, he's willing to do anything. He'll perjure himself in a court of law for the sake of money. All he wants is money. Is he gazlan to raisa? But if he's testifying, again, assuming there's no Nagia Bates, we're not going to let him marry him. If he's testifying on 
the marriage status for one, which has nothing to do with Dine Mamanus. It's not a monetary case at all. We can always talk about repercussions. But in and of itself, the question of whether her husband is alive or not, that's not Dine Mamanus. So when the Torah says that a Gaza was possibly Adams, it puts it to two different Allahs. There are two Allahs that are inherent in the soul of Gaza. One is that we can't trust them in monetary world. Any monetary case, what's it called civil law? I don't know if that's right. But in, in monetary law, we can't trust him. He, he'll do anything for the love of money. But when we go out of the realm of monetary law, then it's a technical pursuit. Mm -hmm. He's a Russian. And the Torah says you cannot rely on testimony of a Russian. In the case of a person who says they're active, this is a bit of a stretch. We're going to say that he's possibly able to rise him, but it's only a technical pursuit. Meaning, if he has no gains, because we're telling him, look, man, you're not going to be able to marry this woman. No way, no how then he could be believed. The better way of going would be, which I think is going to be the next part of the sugya, but so I don't want to mix the ratio of the sugya with the sefer, is to say that we really don't believe him when he says he killed him. Rabbi Nash insists that I could square even with her opponent. The case are active. I could agree that we would matter the Isha. Not like the case of a Gaza who's already been proven in the past to be a Gaza. We already have plenty of good, solid, reliable testimony that he's a Gaza. He would not be kosher fe Isha. But here we have no evidence that this person, this witness murdered the, the husband. The time of the Rabbanon, so why did the Rabbanon rely on, on someone who by his own confession is a murderer? In the Rav. The Omar Rav, Adam Karavet, Sal Atzmo, Vein Adam Mesim Atzmo Rosha. Now, this is what we've really been waiting for until now that we don't actually believe him to say that he murdered the person. In the case of a Gazlan, we have, we have testimony. That he stole something. So he certainly is possibly Avis. We can't rely on him. But in this case, we don't even believe that he actually killed the guy. Why? Because of the principle of Rava. Adam Karvetel Atmo, the Ain Adam Mason Atmo Russia. A man comes into Pesdin and he says, Plodi Ravani Lertzoni. And we quoted Rabbi Yosef, who said that we have to disqualify this witness, throw him out of court, because by his own admission, he's a rush. Comes along Rava and he says, No, he can be a reliable witness. We're not going to believe that he was near Valertzono. We're going to believe him to put the, ro the Rovea to death. But as far as himself is concerned, that's self incrimination. And we don't accept and rely on self-incrimination. Adalu Mason Atzmo Rush. He writes here, We can't trust him, so to speak, to say about himself that he is a Russian, that he violated a terrible criminal act. We cannot class him as an aid. El Baldov. Well, that's what you would say before then. That he's a baldov. The einahoda also mo ila lasos es atzmo rasha. His confession is not relied upon to make him into a Russia, to establish his status as a Russia. He cannot incriminate himself. The only area of halacha in which a person's hodah, his consent, 
and his admission about himself is reliable and is valid in a court of law is only mama. Odas Baldin is Kamea Adam Dom. So if he confesses that he owes money to someone, then and only then do we rely upon him. Oh, but in order to establish himself as a Russia, he's a Baldovar, and his Oda is not meaningful, it's not valid. He cannot make himself into a criminal, into a Russia. Not like Fee of Moment, where he has to take out money from his pocket because he admits that he's holding on to someone else's phone. So since he's not believed upon himself, vis-a-vis himself, to establish himself as a Russia, therefore, we can accept, says Rava, his words about Plony, that Plony is a Rovea. And we split his testimony into two halves, as we said before, Balhin and Pibura. So with regard to the Rovea, he's believed. With regard to himself as a Nerva, He's not believed. Now a person says, I killed your husband. Even though based on his own admission, he is a Russia. He's not believed to establish himself as a Russia, as a Hore. Because of Rav's principle. And therefore we're going to apply Palhidin Dibura. And we'll accept that part, that segment of his Avis vis a vis Plony, the husband, that he was actually killed, that he's dead. But we're not going to accept his testimony that he himself killed him. And that's called Palgin and Bibu. There's a little bit of an extra finish here, Palgin and Bibu, in the case of her active, because we're taking one word. You can't split that word into two. What you're going to have to do is <laughs> you're going to have to say it like this. Loni nerad al yodvi. So-and-so was killed by me. And we'll accept so-and-so was killed, but we're not accept by me. And that's similar to the case of Loni Ravani, that we don't accept what it's on. And that's called unity. So it comes out now that there's no steer between Rabbi Nasha and the Tachamim of our Mishnah. Rabbi Nasha is talking about a case where he's an established Gaza. We have, for Nikadus Dinan, from, from Shaysis May Gracious, we have testimony against him that he's a first class Gaza. Who knows how many different robberies, you know, and banks he robbed. So he's possibly Adis. We can't rely on him in Adis Mishnah. And you can't say Palgin and Dibura in it. He's testifying against, he's testifying about this man that he died. And therefore, uh, his husband, his wife can get married. How can you trust him? He's possibly Amos. He's a well known guest. Long, long ago, he established as a guest. But in a case where now he's making a statement that has two parts to it one part is vis a vis the victim or the or the criminal, and the other part is supposed to be himself. He's not believed on himself, and he's making himself a Russian, but, he, but the rest of his statement we can accept. And that's called Palgin and Dibura. It's almost as if there are two Haggadahs simultaneous. Normally we say every witness is given an opportunity for one Haggadah. One story. Tell us one Sipra Mice. Here we're saying there are two separate Haggadahs. There's one Agoda on the Rovea, and there's another Agoda on the Nirva himself. We're not going to trust him on himself, but we will trust him on the Rovea, because that Agoda is Agoda Shlema. Complete Agoda, he's, he's not possible. He says, Machalkin is Nibura Lishtayim, the Omer Shem Makablin is Tvarm Shaploni Rova, and will aim Makablin as Masha Omer Lutsoni. And that's called Palgin and Dibura. Okay, here, the Eid Omer Aktiv, Afshel and Tvarfu Rasha, by his own confession, he's a Rasha, he don't never know where Allah's Mushu Hora.
So when he says Ploni Ravani, he's not Nemo on Alatsmo, Loma Lertsoni. And when he says Raktiv, he's not Nemo on Alatsmo to establish himself as a Rotseach and a Rosho. And therefore, we'll only accept that Haggadah, or that part of the Haggadah, in which he says Ploni Nera, or in the case of the Rovea, Ploni Ravani. See, what I find strange here is we have a lot of dreams for like a witness can't come in and just make some sort of general statement and say, well, this guy should be put to death or something like that. You know, we hope we every it. A man comes in and says, I know that this woman's husband was killed. So what? Can you tell me how he was killed? What was the murder weapon? Who was the murderer? We have to be hope every We need details. And his answer to all those questions is that I killed him. So Palgina we, we, you know, we, we put earplugs into our ears. We don't hear him say that I am the murderer. But we hear him testify that Pony was killed. But I would like to know who killed him and how did he die? He's not offering me a full Avis. It's like a Chati Avis. The Gemara says, I'll be Shnaim Aidame, Yokum Dover, Dover below Chati Dover. You can't tell me half the story. I'm going to investigate and interrogate. I want to know answers to my questions. Who killed him? How was he killed? Where did you see it happen? And he says, I killed him. Oh, no, no, we don't hear that. Mom's the word, you know, like, put the earplug, the earphones on your earmuffs. But again, the bottom line is, this has nothing to do with Rabbi Nash. But Menashe is talking about a different story. A well-established possible Yavis. He's a Gazlan. We know he's a Gazlan. We can't accept his testimony. So what I wanted to say originally, that maybe there are two dimensions to the Psul Yavis of Gazlan, and maybe from some perspective we could rely on a Gazlan, that might make sense according to the Havamina. Because it was a Havamina here, that we can only understand Rav, Rav Menashe based on Rav Yehuda Shita, that our active is not believed. But the Rabbanon who reject Rav Yehuda, and they hold that he is believed to say our active, they would likewise reject Rav Menashe in the case of a Gazma. So there, you're, you're, I, I don't think you have a choice but to say that at that point, the Sugya, the Gemara maintained that a Gazma is only possibly alias as a technical psul. Again, if he was testifying in a monetary case, I have no doubt about it. We don't believe him as far as he can throw an elephant. So the Gemara says, Lema Rav Yosef, the Omar Ki Rabbi Yehuda. Let's go over this. Rav Yosef said that Ploni Ravani Lertzoni, he's not believed. Why? Because by his own admission, he's a Russian. So you can't testify on the road there. Does he basically rely, is he just reiterating the position, the identical position of Rabbi Yehudu, says her active no nemo, because by his own admission, he's a Russian. But that way, then it comes out to Rabbi Yosef, who says, Kony Ravani Lutsoni Eino Nemon, would seem to be against the Rabbanan Shita. Because they're active, they, they rely on his testimony. So the Gemara is now equating Rav Yosef with Rav Yehud. And that's with Varecha Rosha. I mean, by your own admission, you're a Russia. That's going to apply in her active. And that's why Rabbi Yudha disqualifies him. And that's going to apply in Ploni Ritzani, Ravani Lutsoni, going to Rabbi Yosef. We have to throw out his Hebus and disqualify it because with Varecha Rosha. And how could you testify against the Rovea? Let's just think about this for a minute. It's again. 
According to Rabbi Yosef, only refining the Tzobi is not believed. Therefore, her active is not believed. But again, Plony refining the Tzobi is not believed because we want to put the Rovea to death. So the question is, can we say Palgin and Dibura and accept the testimony on the Rovea without accepting the last half? That's where Rabbi Yosef says the Barat of Russia, to the Bayoni Mishnah of Russia. In the case of our kids, we're only trying to be Matar's wife. Then maybe even Rabbi Yosef would agree to Palgin and Dibur. If Palgin and Dibur is going to save, I'm saying, if, if Palgin and Dibur is going to salvage the Avis and therefore put the Rovet to death, then we're not going to say Palgin and Dibur. Was by his own admission, he's a Russia, he's Pony Revival at Sony. But in the case of Raktiv, the whole thrust of the Avis is to be Matar his wife. So then maybe we could use the Svar of Palgin and Bibura, especially for Mokam Ibu. I can square off even with Rabbon in the case of Raktiv. So again, in Pony Revival at Sony, Rabbi Yosef says, I. I cannot trust his, his Eidus to put the Rovea to death, but in the case of Raktiv, he's believed. Ah, yeah, because shiny Eidus, Isha da Kilu Be It means that although there's a technical soul, if by his own admission in this testimony, he is a Russia, we have to throw out the Eidus, but the Rabbanon could be Makil if they think that he's reliable and he's not lying. Even though technically he's possible according to the Torah law, we can rely on his testimony or active and be matir, his wife. Again, even though by his own admission he's a Russia, but nevertheless, He has their months. There are Menashe the Omar Kirab Yehud. A Menashe who said that a Gazlan, a Doraisa, is possibly a Gazkisha. He holds like Rabbi Yehuda, her active, Lotinos age. In other words, once we reject Alginit Bura, and by his own admission, he's a Russia, therefore we cannot marry off the, the, the deceased wife. I mean, if he if he really is deceased. So again, I think the Gemara is coming back to our original premise that according to the Rabbanon of Rabbi Yehuda, a Gazlan, our Torah, would be Koshal Edus Isha, which is a Pelin. We're going to have to assume that there, as we said before, there are two dimensions to the Psul of Gazlan Doraisa, Liedus. Now, Rabbi Nasha holds. that the same Psuli Edus that Pasel the testimony of of a Gazan Doraisa and that's even for Edus Isha.
the Rav Nasha could agree that in case of Raktiv, we believe him. We will apply the principle of Palgita Dipur. It says, Mishum Kach Sover Kirabonon. So I just didn't get that last point. Again, the Gemara is saying that Rabbi Nasha, the the Omar ki Rabbi Yehud, no, it's Rabbi Nasha who passes a gazel do raisa for his isha. Would he likewise pass a raktiv? And we cannot let his wife get married. So it means that we're rejecting palgina dibur. But again, I don't understand. I think there are two premises. Number one, that Rabbi Yehuda rejects Palgina Dibura. We actually have to believe him that he killed the guy, which means he's a Russian. We can't accept him, his aides to be Mata the Isha. And then on top of that, Lo Amrina Palgina Dibura. Now, what does Rabbi Nasha have anything to do with Palgina Dipura? Nothing whatsoever. I mean, Rabbi Nasha is not connected to Palgina Dipura. So why does Rabbi Nash have to hold like Rabbi Yehud in the case of Raktiv? For Raktiv lends itself to Palgin and Dipura. And that's what that's where I got lost here. And Mamsha did very well till the end. You understand what also bothers me? I can accept that according to Rabbi Yehuda, we don't have Palgina Dibur. And therefore we look for his own confession that he's a Russia in the Avus, and we have to throw out the Avus. We can't say Palgina Dibur. But how does that connect with Rabbi Nash? Rabbi Nash was saying something totally different. Rabbi Nash is saying that we don't rely on the testimony of a Russia. So again, this is all a discussion in Rav Yosef. Because Rav Yosef said that what? Plony Ravani Lutsoni is not believed. Right, because that's not a case of a dystesia. But in a case of a dystesia, where we have the spar of Igu and Ikilure Babanon, then I think we could say Palgina Dibura. So, wait, so what would be in a case of a Raktiv? Wait a second. If we're saying shiny Avis Isha that Kilo Berabon, then we're not operating with Palgina Dibura. Palgina Dibura is a, is a Doraisa spur. He must be saying that although there's no Palgina Dibura, but someone who's possible to be Din Torah.
his edus is reliable in edus each. So therefore, Rav Yosef, even though he rejects Kalgina Dibura in the case of Pony Ravani Lertsoni, but nevertheless, he can hold like the Rabbanan in the case of Haraktiv, and even without Kalgina Dibura, even if I admit that, right, if he admits he's a Posod or Raisa, but nevertheless, greatest Isha, Ikulu Barabona. So that that's Rav Yosef Shita now. The Gemara is suggesting that according to Rav Yosef, you can rely.